What is up, YouTube fan folk? Um, it's been a crazy few months. Last I was here, saying so I'm gonna post a video of changing my turbo. I took it out, I rebuilt it, put it in, had an oil leak. Um, I put off fixing it for a few months. It was a slow drip. I thought it was a bad O-ring for the turbo pedestal base, but it was actually the plug in the back of the back pressure valve delete pedestal that um, wasn't tightened. And when I was filming and everything, I said, I can see glue here from the factory. Looks like it's been tightened down properly. So I didn't touch it. So this kind of stuff deters me from making videos because I want to show you how to do the right thing. But sometimes uh, shit happens, I guess is the best way to put it. And I had to go back and I was dreading it. I was super busy with my side hustle. So I was just keeping my truck busy. Long story long. Uh, here we are five months later now. Um, so there's other little things that have happened along the way. Um, so the other day I ordered, and this is what we're here for today. Um, I ordered a factory fuel bowl. Um, when I did the turbo, I did the O-rings on the fuel bowl and then I fixed the oil leak and put it all back together. And then like two weeks went by and then I started having diesel drip through the valley. So what I think it is, is you've got, I have a 94 to 95 has a different fuel bowl than 96, 97. So there's a metal piece that goes into the bottom of the bowl. And I think it's leaking around that from like corrosion over the years with the aluminum against the steel. So here I am, um, ordered a Ford factory fuel bowl. I wanted to do a fuel bowl delete and nice lines and banjo fittings and fuel pump, but it's just not in the budget right now. So, factory fuel pump. The day after I ordered it, and I ordered this from Swag Diesel, and I wanna give them a shout out here because uh, I've had great experiences with them. The day after I ordered this, I'm driving home and one of the high pressure oil lines I put on a few months ago, uh, upgraded stainless steel, braided for heat and everything, popped a pinhole on the highway, had to get towed home. And I was one, because two weeks before that, I, th I was like, I'm not gonna need these spare. I trust these graded stainless wheels. And I threw, to make room on my truck, I threw out the, uh, the, the old rubber lines from Ford, which could have gotten me home that night, but AAA got me home on a flatbed. And anyways, so another big shout out to them. As soon as I messaged them, Swag sent priority mail, a new one out to me. So I got a new high pressure oil line here. I gotta put that in while I'm in there, but I'm really grateful for them. Huge shout out, they just sent it like, hey, what happened? And they're like, please send us back the old one. So I've got the old one I'm gonna mail to them. So they wanna do some R&D, make sure there was nothing wrong on their end or something they could do differently. Um, from what I could see, maybe if it was like an eighth of an inch shorter, it would have avoided this little situation or it could have been the way I configured my 90 degree fittings. So anyways, Swag Diesel, awesome. Thank you so much. Use them, they've got a bunch of different things. And the thing they got here from them was this Ford factory fuel bowl. It was on sale. So again, I told you I have a 94 at an August built. 1994 truck this was a 94 and a half interestingly i had the turbo diesel badges on the truck came with it even though it had a power stroke in it so oh what is that like those corvette guys oh that's one out of 32 they did that so no it's just it's a truck with a power stroke so anyways i digress i ordered because you can do this a 96 97 fuel bowl uh one of the big differences oh look at that nice shiny new no none of that clear plastic crap fading off of it um one of, oh, man this feels good <laughs> one of the big differences on the 94 95 is they have a rubber hose from here to here and that can be problematic so on 96 97 they went from this fuel pressure regulator is different then they put this sensor on the 94 and and a half to 95 this sensor was down here and now it's up here for easier access so you don't have to pull the fuel bolt to get to that sensor so same bolt pattern same intake output um, pressure regulators I think a little different on this there's more o-rings or just because they've got that up here I don't know if this came with a filter in it yet but we're gonna find out and uh, yeah oh look at that that might even give me a new um, I think that's for the IPR. Sweet. I don't have to do a pigtail. 
so yeah i'm going to show you how to swap this out thanks for listening to my sob story i'm actually going to do this real time because the last time i pulled these this out i configured all of the um hose clamps to where i could access them easily and i think i can get this out and the new one in probably less than 20 minutes and uh i know that sounds crazy but i'm going to challenge myself and you're going to watch with me and i'm going to talk as we go along so yeah i gotta take off my lines undo my two bolts undo my rubber lines to here in the clamps I've got nice uh ford clamps to replace those so yeah June, embark with me on this endeavor. It's all in Mexico. Alrighty, so here's where we're at. Let me climb up here. Currently, I'm gonna drain the fuel. I've got these two lines to disconnect uh, from the front. I've gotta undo these two clamps, loosen that hose, gotta get the spider out of here, take these out. Um, I've got the two bolts at the base that hold this down, 13 millimeters with a long extension. And again, I'm lucky because I put this fuel bowl back in when I did a fuel pump, uh, cause my weep hole was leaking. Let me try and zoom in there. So I put my clamps so I could easily get to them from up here. So you might not have that. This is where some videos will show you just to cut the lines to pull this bowl. But when you put it back together, you can get the clamps all in accessible areas and um, make this job a lot easier. I also have this factory heat shield on here, believe it or not. So what I'm gonna do is probably get the camera set up over here so you can watch me in real time. This zooms properly. Anyway, let's get started. So I'm gonna start by draining and then I'll get that camera set up over here. Yeah, 9 16 13 millimeter for the bolt and then all the hose clamps, which I think these ones are like quarter or something um so and then the 5 16th on these clamps eight millimeter if you want to be a canadian about it all right let's go all right let's get this started so i'm gonna start get that spider off actually let me step here in place okay got a little work platform going um, thing to make this easier. Let's get a magnetic tray. So here we are doing it real time. Get this quarter inch there. Okay, so spider's gotta come off for me first. You don't have to do this way. spider just fell off. I gotta go grab that. All right. That fell. Not a fun place. Huh. Okay. So, right off the bat. Things to avoid. Sometimes with how you gotta like hurt yourself to get some things. <laughs> okay. So that O-ring for that already fell out. Beautiful. There we go. Got that. So now that that's out, take this heat shield off. There. I've got my fuel lines here. So I'm gonna loosen those up. I'm gonna just do both. So with that, got a quarter inch socket on an extension. If you have a long, if you have a long straight screw screwdriver, you can do this too. So uh, and then that one down on the way bottom for the fuel pump. 
to the bowl. I've got that set up so I can get it with this. So I'm gonna go straight down in there and that. So this is where some folks, depending on how these clamps are put in, and I don't even know how some people get clamps in this the way they have. I think I've got... Got these other clamps in here that might be 930 seconds or something. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, so weird. Um so that's that. I can get this one here. These two on the fuel line up a steel line up so that one there and that one there okay so that should make that line loose now i'm going to get these fuel lines which tighten well okay there's one that one i just don't Hopefully these are flexible enough still to they come off pretty easy. Okay, so I'm gonna grab you from up here. Four minutes in, with a couple setbacks. So I got those two off. Those two clamps are loose. A clamp from the bowl to here, they're out. And then I got the clamp way down below in there. That one's loose too. So now I'm gonna take the um, bolts that hold the fuel bowl down and I should be able to when they're loose pick up the whole assembly wiggle this top one out and then kind of finagle the whole assembly to where I pull the top out and then I rock the bottom out off of the fuel pump and I should be able to get that out so I also have to unplug the harness but here we go, you'll get to see here. Like I said, I do it in real time. So you know and can be confident. Because I'm a, I was kicked out of public school six times. So if I can do it, y'all got this. and grab those hopefully I don't drop them if I do I get a magnet I probably let me get some rags because now that I'm freaking myself out I'm gonna drop one in the intake or something <laughs> dang it I also just realized I didn't get the clamp on the fuel drain so I'm gonna have to get in there and do that as well that is one that needs to be addressed. Again, that should be that quarter inch or 930 seconds, depending. Some clamps I replaced on this and the new Ford ones were like a 930 second. So I'm gonna get that clamp one that's down here. All right. So that's down on that plastic fuel drain. Again, I strategically placed all these clamps for removal because as a mechanic for years, when you see somebody do something that makes you aggravated, you do something different. So, all right, now it's finally draining. It's all draining out now so I rocked it forward and that got that upper hose off 
So now I have to push the hose down here on this inlet one. Make sure those clamps are loose. So I slid that off. So that's out there. But now I should be able to, that lower one came off the um, finger mer bobber. What's that called? Fuel drain. So now that that's loose on the fuel pump there, again, like I said, I just tilt it, give it a little tug. Come on. A little tug. I have to do a little more in that fuel line. There we go. Clamp. Okay. So, look at that. That's it. And then I gotta unplug this from the IPR. Fuel bolt is out. Oh, look at that rust. Oh, God. Okay. Change places I'm buying diesel from. Christ. Um, so the old one's out. Now I gotta move this line and this line over to the new one. You see how they've got that sensor down there. So this, I can't for the life of me, I believe my leak was coming from right here. Uh, I did the O-rings on this thing and just to no avail, still have little fuel leaks and they're not from the other lines uh, that are in here. So, cool, I'm gonna get these lines over to the other one. Again, strategically place the clamps so they're easiest to get to for this process. And it will, you will be rewarded. Wipe my hands here. Get you in. Ten minutes in. So you can see here some of these differences. How they've got that regulated. This had that filter screen. There's a little regulator screen in there. So we have our inlet there. They've moved the sensor from here to up there. Um, what else? You still have your Schrader valve for fuel pressure test. But yeah, so our hoses are same, our wiring's similar. I might try and run this wiring different if I can to kind of mimic that because it keeps it nice and out of the way. I just have to run that, and undo these and run it through there. So yeah, I'd like to see that done. So I'm gonna do that. And then uh, we'll get those hoses swapped over. And we should be able to put that back in. Cool. I'll let you watch. Okay. So that comes out. That comes out. These come out. And we just gotta run them through there. One at a time. Get it in there, you bastard. Okay. Come on. Cool. So that wasn't terrible at all. That'll help keep it neat, kind of less wiring to rub around and out of the way, like cheap or something. there so that'll help keep that clean neat out of the way run where they need to in the front of the engine okay before it was kind of running between those two lines so let's do that again that was gonna go up here they're all red and white wires man that one's gonna go there so again, I've had this one apart before. I put O-rings in it and I 
just can't figure out where the hell that leak's coming from, so I'm forced to assume it's coming from one of those. I might 3D print a cap where I can put air pressure into this or seal it off in something, put it in underwater to find where the leak is. There's that bolt. So let me get these hoses off here, put them on that one. This is how we do it. Okay, these are those weird ones. Nine thirty seconds. I've really seen some of these where I don't know. I can only scratch my head to try to figure out how they got those clamps, some clamps on in the first place. so I don't have to go too crazy. That hose is still on the truck. It's our IPR. We've got our plug. So just notice the same plugs here. The wires are still looking the same. We'll find out when we plug in if the check engine light goes on. <laughs> so now that's ready. This is ready to go back in already. Uh, as for these, I'm gonna run them similar to how they were. It's gross. Okay, let's get it going. So yeah, a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, but regardless, it'll still work either way. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's get you back over there. Hi. I'll take you in real quick. So, you know. While you're in there just check clean up all that i got some fuel spills so i'm gonna stop that up real quick i'll take a couple eh i hope they look real time whatever so yeah that is all ready to go back in i'll wipe that up real quick sop it sop it up okay just had to Celsius energy drink. No, it was a rain sour gummy bear. It's pretty good. Okay. Let me soak this up. Valley of Death. Check out some of my other stuff and videos. I've got a camper trailer I'm redoing right now. So planning on doing a road trip here from where I live out to Grand Canyon and Flagstaff and actually going to meet one of my followers for the first time. So uh, he bought some property there, I'm trying to homestead it and off grid and I wanna go check it out. 
we've been stayed in touch he reached out to me on instagram so i gotta make sure my truck's good and ready for that haul because it's a 13 hour drive for me from where i'm at to flag so and in the wretched state of california you can only go 55 miles an hour with a trailer which sucks but as soon as you get over the border you can go 75. fun all right i will say despite that stupid law i wish they switched it up because there's definitely some spots in this state and mountains and passes where you shouldn't even be going 55 with a truck and trailer because it gets nasty um i've known way too many people who've like crashed logging trucks on the coast highways just from over braking and brake fade and using their air brakes so yeah some places need it others come on let's be real um all right I'll make sure these flexi hoses stay up front while i put that in so i'm gonna swing them in front of that braided line got my plug here locked off there these are still tight never touched them so i have the reverse motion of what we just did before we're now gonna get the bottom one on like this so I'll line that up <clears throat> there okay now I'm gonna get that top one swing that out a little bit here much tighter that okay. no. wow. holes what happened okay you had to fold the little over here okay there we go much better uh, this bottom one is always the pain for me the drain valve so yeah slide that on you know and that one it's like it's there to redirect the fuel so this one I slide with my two fingers back up I'll make sure the metal one's close and that close that gap so what I'm gonna do now before I tighten any of these down make sure I got a good straight access to them and then I'm going to tighten the fuel bowl in with the uh, bolts so that way it's ready to tighten everything down so that way they're all in the right place and we're not stressing the lines by tightening them down. getting those bolts back in so I can get them started come on oh. I just don't have fingers long enough sometimes get pliers <clears throat> She's gone down in the valley. Uh, okay, I'm gonna hold it like that. All right. So I'm gonna get those started by hand here. That one's good. That one's good. And 
while I'm looking here. There it is. Don't forget to plug in your IPR. <laughs> it's important to help these things stay running. Literally. So I'm gonna go do that right now. That's gonna be more difficult because I didn't do that first, so. done this thought about this and done this first you're here with me I'm not perfect a lot of times I don't make these videos is because I want to be perfect and then I get frustrated when I can't be so let's get that plugged in Crazy. They're on, plugged in. Okay. So now I will tighten down my bolts. snug on the uh, fuel drain, so it's going to raise a, pose a little challenge here, but I like a challenge, so I'm going to try to spin it around with one finger, there it is, get it lined up, make sure I'm on tidy, ready tidy, okay, Again, that, that one front one's just to hold that hose for the drain. Okay, so now that I got that one tightened, I'm gonna plug in that main harness to the fuel bowl. Right in the side here. Make sure we're all plugged in there. That rubber O-ring, the this one's blue, but make sure your seal is still there for your plug. Searched. That's just me trying to figure it all out right now. Okay, so you got that. Yeah, so no problem. Come on. 
really? There it is, finally. All right, so that's plugged in. Beautiful. All right, now I can get those other clamps. Ugh. So, we're gonna get these inlet ones back on. I'm gonna pull up on that metal line just so I know it's as close as can be. That was tightened. Cool. Awesome. I'm gonna get my extension on here. Get these clamps. Okay. did what was off and we'll get this other bottom one that's 9 30 seconds so yeah depending on how many different people have been in here you never know um what freaking clamps are gonna be in there there we go so that's tight down on that that's really tight maybe too tight back it off a little Okay, so now that we got that, um, we can put that heat shield back on. Now I can get my spider back in there. I got the rags out again. I'm picky with how I got my clamps, so do the what do I have to do here for this? I think I keep that one long and get that one on here. That in there. Or is it vice versa? Nope, that was it. Always a trick to some of these things. Um, so for that, I'm going to get this. I don't like these. I wish I knew more tricks besides like silicone or glue. Bought it and uh, yeah, I don't want to ruin it, so I'll get that on first. That's the wrong direction. Alright. Okay. So I like to get that one first because then I can feel comfortable that I'm not going to tighten and switch it all around or shift it all around. Alright, so now I can get these tightened back down. Love these riffraff boots. got to open this up make sure it did come with a filter and uh, see what's up so but that's that's replacing it so where are we at 32 minutes not too bad all right let's go check that filter I'm gonna pause you now you just love to see it brand new motorcraft filter original lid with these little clippy ones that's cool I, I went to Ford here and I've heard they suck. I learned the hard way, but Ford got banged me $84 for filter. So this whole assembly with all the new sensors, the new heater element, the new filter, the fuel bowl housing, a fuel pressure regulator, 
it was three hundred twenty-five dollars out the door, right? Um, oh yeah, I still got to hook up those two fuel lines. So, but to me, uh, yeah, three hundred and twenty-five bucks to have a whole new fuel bowl. I, I really wanted to do the fuel bowl delete and a fuel pump, but after researching to do the way I would want it, nice ones and there are really good ones out there that make the most sense. There's people that make um, fuel fuel pump harnesses that are plug and play for these trucks now, which I would do that. I would go that route. Again, it's not in the market at the moment. Just here I'm trying to make YouTube videos to make money. So I'm happy about this. It's a little grease cool. So we can get this back in. Install slowly. I've never owned the Ford tool for these. So, but I do own a pry bar that gets me out of a lot of situations. back on and I'll be ready to go out and fire it up I don't have fuel to uh, put in here right now which is a bummer I don't have house that I can just dump in here so I'm gonna have to crank the living piss out of this and hopefully hell that'll do it my serenity man I'm happy knowing, you know, if Ford upgraded it, they recognized an issue with the original. So the fact that there's interchangeability on these and now I'll have a better system here, fuel bowl and a, some, this is 281,000 miles on this. So I can't complain. So if I get even another 150,000 miles out of this fuel bowl, maybe then Bitcoin and Dogecoin will go to the moon and I'll be able to do a, <laughs> I wouldn't come and swap this, but able to get it all built all right so why don't we crank the living bejesus out of it and slow short cranks just to get fuel up there let's see how it goes that was enough fuel in there, I guess, to get it running and not need to prime it. I'll take it. I'll check for some leaks now.
So for what it's worth, all said and done, that took 45 minutes. Again, I had the upper hand here because I had the clamps the way I wanted from a past removal job, but to remove the old bowl, put a new bowl in with a new fuel filter, all new sensors, heater grid, 45 minutes, that was $325. Um, at the end of the day, you can't go wrong. So uh, now I have the more upgraded for the early OBS Power Strokes fuel bowl. Um, ready to go. I didn't see any obvious leaks here. I'm obviously going to drive it, test it, see what happens, report back. Um, but yeah, that is all I've got. I hope you like and subscribe, follow me, uh, send me messages. You can find me on Instagram, BrianBuilt360 there. On Etsy, BrianBuilt360 because I'm 3D printing different parts and things for some of these older trucks. So give it an old like and subscribe and hope I'll see you there. Uh, also, send me other stuff you want to see done with these because we're all running into the same problem with these things being 20, 30, 30 years old. Yikes. Right on. Bye.